Happy Monday, everybody. Oh, wow. So while Hunter Biden abuses the arts, Alvin Bragg sniffs his own farts. <laughs> Hunter, the most successful crackhead the world has ever seen, <laughs> is returning to New York this week to exhibit his awful abstract artwork at a Soho art gallery. I haven't seen a mess like this since I, that time I took a laxative with four bags of Skittles. <laughs> it was for Pride Month I was trying to poop a rainbow. <laughs> Hunter was spotted at the gallery over the weekend, even as a congressional committee is trying to find out who the hell is paying between 75 and 500 grand each for his crappy paintings. Although that looks pretty good, I have to say. <laughs> Maybe he does have talent. Meanwhile, an Arkansas judge ordered Hunter's financial records to be shielded from the public as he tries to lower his child support payments to London Roberts. She's the dancer he knocked up while he was banging his brother's widow and sleeping with the brother's sis widow's sister-in-law or something. I'd say do the math, but we have two women on the panel. A sexist would say. And what kind of poverty can Hunter be claiming as a reason to lower these payments? What, he doesn't have enough cash to buy diapers for his kid and his dad? <laughs> He's also trying to keep his illegitimate daughter, Navy Joan, from taking the Biden name, which <laughs> you gotta ask, how will she ever make a living if she can't trade on that name? But maybe when she turns five, she'll be qualified to join an oil company's board of directors. <laughs> of course, this is happening as Donald Trump is under indictment in Manhattan, a precedent that can't mean good news for the current president's pampered progeny. I mean, if we're going to start prosecuting rich, powerful men for paying off sex workers, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> let's not forget Congress, who used to pay off sexual harassment suits through taxpayer-funded accounts. They had a slush fund for sleaze. And remember that Bill Clinton paid 850 grand to settle the Paula Jones suit. That's classic Bill, though. Thousands to settle a suit and not a dime to dry clean a dress. <laughs> A stain on his presidency. <laughs> Unrelated question, where was Chelsea Clinton when Epstein was murdered? <laughs> yeah, you can't answer it, can you? I rest my case. <laughs> but really, buying story me Daniel's silence might not have been Trump's best idea ever, especially since it didn't work. It just goes to show you, even 130 grand can't convince a woman to stop talking. <laughs> All blackmailed sexists would say. Point is, we know this is political because it's always political. And it might be harmless were it not for the opportunity costs. Meaning, what do you miss when everyone's on a political witch hunt? Well, Islamic terrorists, for one. While we were impeaching Clinton, what were they up to? They were making plans for 72 virgins. Just like Clinton. <laughs> <laughs> but they had already bombed the World Trade Center in 93, and yet, years later, we still took our eyes off the ball. And like Monica Lewinsky, put them squarely on bills. <laughs> and Trump's... <laughs> Disgusting. How dare you laugh at this. And Trump's first impeachment happened while COVID erupted out of China. We lost two months in that battle because the media chose to focus on the orange monster instead of the red menace. Makes you wonder how many lives could have been saved if the media and politicians had done the right and urgent thing first, but they didn't. They were too busy kissing Andrew Cuomo's ass and being kissed back. And now a huge story broke last week. AI researchers pleaded with us to shut down the tech for at least six months. That's roughly the time it takes to recover from a hair transplant. <laughs> Just making a comparison. A letter signed by Elon Musk and Apple's co-founder Steve Wozniak stressed that a superhumanly smart AI that gets beyond our control spells death for all of us. I only hope I'll be spared as a sex slave. <laughs> Looking forward to it. I volunteered, actually, <laughs> to my toaster. But that was a day before the indictment news, which is now a forever ago. 
You notice what all three have in common, terror, COVID, AI. They are deadly things that can get away from us if we aren't watching. That's how I lost my pet python, Chokey, <laughs> in this studio an hour ago. <laughs> and so another opportunity to prevent suffering is squandered on the altar of political vengeance. It's a hunting party, and you're among the prey. You ever see this movie? They're not human beings. <laughs> Every year, a bunch of elites kidnap normal folk like us. Where'd they get you from? Wyoming. Mississippi. Orlando. <laughs> and hunt us for sport. Hurry, hurry, hurry up. So it's true. We're being hunted. That's from three years ago. It's insane, but damn if it didn't predict the hunt. Since then, parents were called domestic terrorists. January 6th demonstrators jailed in mass. Kids are now medical subjects for delusional activists. The IRS hires 80,000 agents and stalks a reporter while he's speaking truth to power. BLM rioters get payouts instead of prison. And when kids got killed at a school, the White House said, we must protect the trans. It certainly feels like we are the problem from their perspective, not fentanyl or the homeless or the border. Nope, it's us. At least until the world ends due to climate change and AOC says we have only 12 months left. Let's be welcome tonight's guest. She didn't write The Old Man in the Sea, but you can always tell when something's fishy. Editor-in-Chief of the Federalist, Molly Hemingway. And like a fat guy at a buffet, he embraces all sides. <laughs> Co-host of The Five, Harold Ford Jr. This man needs no introduction because he's a last minute replacement for Charlie Hurt. <laughs> Comedian Joe Mackey. <laughs> and clubs call her a comedian to watch because she keeps stealing silverware. Fox News contributor Cat Tim. <laughs> Joe Mackey, always a pleasure to see you, even if it's on short notice and I didn't want you. Thanks for having me, Greg. <laughs> yes. <laughs> what is your take? Um, you can. You got an, uh, it's a. It's a potpourri. If you uh, the hunt hunter. We've we've learned a lot this week, Greg. Uh, Justice isn't blind. In fact, she has purple hair and a nose ring. <laughs> uh, it just seems like uh, it's like we're driving with Tiger Woods. Everything ends up upside down. <laughs> But I'll say this, I don't like all the comparisons with, with saying, uh, hey, if you uh, arrest Trump, we're going to arrest, you know, Hunter Biden or Joe Biden or Hillary Clinton, because they were actually guilty of real things. Yeah. <laughs> like, when they say no one is above the law, I'm like, that's true. I think no one is above the law. But when it's uh, hush money beyond the statute of limitations, I'm not that worried about it. But I try to keep things positive, Greg. Yeah. Like, Trump's day today was he woke up and got on his own 757 <laughs> and came to New York, and tomorrow he gets arrested, and then he's going to go back to his luxury building. <laughs> <laughs> That's better than the best day I've ever had. <laughs> You know, Molly, I was watching the coverage, and I'll include our network on it, but we, everybody has th th all the cameras trained on the car, and I, I just had visions of O.J. and Al Cowlings <laughs> Jr. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why I pointed at you and said Jr. <laughs> I'd say, hey, you both are juniors. But anyway, we need Trump. I feel like it's like something that like all of a sudden it was like we just quit doing OxyContin and now we started it up again and it feels great. It is absolutely. <laughs> I mean, it is amazing to watch how much the media have to focus on him. I mean, this is a really legitimate big story. This is yeah. big news. It's not a good day for the country that we're going through this. Mm -hmm. um, but they you can tell how excited everybody is. Yeah. To cover it. And, you know. I'm, I'm hoping it's not, like, too exciting tomorrow, though. Yeah, what do you think is going to happen? What do you think his speech is going to be like? I don't know about that, but I was kind of, like, thinking it would be cool to see what his mugshot is like. Mm. Like, I hope he does a really big grin, you know, a thumbs up, something that... <laughs> he is going to turn that into, like, the most 
I got like the biggest selling T-shirt in the history of T-shirts. I'm buying it. Yeah, exactly. It'll be, be better than the I'm with stupid one. <laughs> He'll put it on a mug. Yeah, he'll put it on a mug. That's a great idea. I didn't think of that. Oh Joe's got is full of ideas. <laughs> Not bad for a substitute. <laughs> anyway, Harold, it's good to see you. Always a pleasure to have you on the show. Good to be back around the living room here. Yes, it is. It is. It is. You, we were talking about this on the five, and we're, it, it's such a strange and surreal experience. And I liked what you said there. You said you reminded everybody that he's innocent, which is something Nancy Pelosi forgot about. I think anybody that forgets that um, does a disservice to the, to the judicial system. I, I, I get concerned when I hear either side talk that way. Mm -hmm. We have one system of justice. We are a nation built on a rule of laws. There are two predicates to our system. One is everyone is presumed innocent until proven or unless they're, they're found guilty. And two, facts and evidence always reign in a courtroom. We have checks and balances in the judicial system, meaning if you get you don't like the outcome in the lower court, you can appeal, and you can go all, way, all the way to the Supreme Court. So you have two ways to check it. I would caution Democrats, show restraint. Uh, this is not a time, I agree with Molly in this regard, this is not a good day for the country. It's not a good day for the president either, but it's not a good day for the country. And my only hope is, if there's not enough there to convict, I hope a court uh, dismisses or decides this case before it goes to trial. And if there is enough, if there are new charges, I hope we all can be open-minded enough to understand that the country's bigger than one person uh, and let the trial go forward, uh, if indeed his lawyers want that to happen. Mm, what do you think of Hunter's art? Well, I've never seen it. I I've only seen what little you've shown here, and I can only react the way you were. You thought it was better than what you were going to... Is that Python underneath me? <laughs> <laughs> no, but thank you. <laughs> We should go back and talk about Hunter. I thought I'm going to be, you know, I'm not going to be on for the rest of the week, and people are going to think it's because of that joke. <laughs> <laughs> Who is the victim here, Kat? Are there any victims? By the me. way, yeah. Because <laughs> I do have to come here tomorrow, and you know the traffic is going to be like. <laughs> it's great. I, that was the question I was going to ask you. He's going to tie up all traffic. I've already gone through the Rockefeller Christmas. Okay, it's yep. finally now it's springtime, and now we got Trump traffic. Um, no, but he, like, it's not like he hates being on TV. It's not like yeah. he hates attention. And like you were saying, I mean, he wasn't really in the news that much anymore. Yeah. And now it's all Trump all the time once again. Mm -hmm. And I really don't see, I mean, again, I haven't seen it, but I don't see if it's just what we're all, we've all been talking about, how he gets convicted on this. Yeah. That's why when everyone's saying, okay, like, no one's above the law, no one's above the law, because actually when it comes to the way they're using this law and trying to do this, he is the only one who's ever been gone through yeah. or has ever had it used that way. So, I don't know. I, I, I don't, he's never actually going to, like, go to prison for this, unless mm -hmm. there's something that I don't know. That would be such an amazing sitcom to go to jail with Secret Service <laughs> agents. It'd be kind of like Hogan's Heroes. <laughs> right? It would be Hogan's Heroes, your friends, with the, like, you have police on your side. You have, you have like a little microphone in the teacup. No, wait, no, teapot. You have a phone in the teapot. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.